not one of them, I'll tell you right now. Okay, I've, I've been working on a new book called The Autistic Brain, and uh, I've got a big chapter on genetics. I've been working with that uh, with Richard Panic in New York. We've reviewed a ton of literature on genetics. Anything in the environment that might have an effect on autism is interacting with susceptible genetics. There's a very big genetic basis, but it's an extremely complex genetic basis. You're talking little tiny code variations. Scientists might go out and study a thousand families, sequence the exome, that's the part of the genome that does the coding DNA, and find a few SNPs, those are code variations, uh, and might find some certain SNPs, and it only explains 5% of the families. But they're finding it in code that's involved with brain development. It is complicated. It's very complicated. It's, you can forget about Mendel and the stuff you learn in high school about biology because that doesn't uh, cover it. All right, let's look at environmental things that might have something to do with autism. Uh, various prescription drugs, like anticonvulsants taken in the first trimester. Uh, these guys right here, bad. Don't let babies drink out of these things. In the first trimester, and right before you can see, you better not drink out of these things because they have plasticizers in them that act as endocrine disruptors. Uh, pesticides, uh, maybe you know, living next to a highway, some of those kind of contaminants, getting in there and interacting with susceptible genetics. And GM foods is definitely not 